many large uh, industrial organizations are currently racing to apply AI in what some people call the fourth industrial revolution. And Siemens is certainly a notable sort of like name that is doing this. And to find out more about what Siemens does with AI, we're pleased to be joined by Uli Waltinger, who's the head of its AI lab. Hello, Uli. Hey, Max. Nice to meet you again. Nice to engage with you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's start a little bit with introductions, with, with, with talking about your career. How did you start working in, in AI and what led to the creation of the Siemens AI lab? Back in the days, um, you know, the first first human generated data arise. You know, we're talking about social networks, we're talking about Wikipedia, research explodes somehow, you know, this access to super large curated knowledge, right? Super cool, like say symbolic stuff, right? On the other side, we had machine learning, right? Um, back in the days, maybe more, SVM, so kernel machines, uh, driven a bit of neurons methodology, so obviously there, but uh, but it gained quite some momentum, right? That we learn somehow representations on neural tops, right? And therefore, throughout the year, I was always passionate about how do we combine those things, right? How do we make sure that I guess you call it connectionist and symbolics nowadays, right? Um, uh, somehow can can be applied in real challenges, right? And then being a senior researcher, you you you, you know you ask yourself, you know, where do you want to actually apply the thing? Right? Where do you want to end up? Where do you want to have actually a big uh, impact? Is it cats? Is it dogs? Is it, you know, optimizing attention or it's ads or stuff like that? You know what? And so my thought was, you know, why not move into corporate research, you know, and having access to these plethora of application scenarios, um, but also the networks of diverse uh, competences, which goes super, super interesting, engaging large worldwide, you know, from, from I don't know, Princeton, you asked, or Berkeley to, you know, Zhejiang, somewhere in China, right? And, and this fascinated me, but also having, you know, data and, and the good of freedom. Applied research means then having an impact-driven research. It means we want to, uh, you know, advance state of the art, you know, on real world challenges. So having ideas and then making, putting them in context and relevance here, right? And after diving a bit round on software development, what means developing software incorporates scrum based agile across regions across, you know, uh, countries, maybe right. Um, and after shaping a, a program a couple of years ago on, you know, on deep learning and AI, it's a, it's a core strategic companies, you know, corporates have this, you know, observation things going on. Um, um, you know, um, we identified that, you know, the team and me identified that uh, like four years ago, right, there is a demand for um, actually uh, orientation, but also exploration on, you know, how to make an impact um, in AI and with machine learning methodologies. And this is where we brought together, um, you know, in the lab and said, like, let's create a physical lab, actually, you know, to facilitate that. What kind of projects are you working in right now? So you explained a little bit about the origins. Yeah, but yeah, what, what, what are some of the things you're doing at the moment? In principle, there are four different pillars, which I would just totally introduce. One pillar is, you know, orientation. As, we, as we're moving in, in an area where we have a pervasive use of machine learning methodologies throughout all products and all processes, um, at least this is our aspirations, that means, you know, different businesses have different scenarios and we need to somehow facilitate, you know, what is production, what means for sales, what means for supply chain, what means for management, and so on, right? So, so you can, uh, and this is the aspect that we want to also guide it. So we call it the minimum for justifiable improvement, right? What is the aspect machine learning or technology in the broader sense can actually make, you know, have, have um, is 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 there improves somehow the job to be done maybe somehow called and or you know the the responsibility you personally have in your job right and therefore we invite people you know to join us and you know apply methodologies you may know from design thinking from lean from scrum you know to identify these opportunities second we call it acceleration and that means you know uh, we use an instrument which is called um, um, coding sprints. Uh, coding sprints are, you know, bringing people together, mostly five to seven people, you know, different diversities um, from, you know, from obviously from gender, but also uh, also from from the background, because we need customer in there, we need IT in there, we need, you know, data science in there, and uh, and so on, right? And so the the, th the focus is here: what is the first step in going end to end? What is the first step? Not not MVP, not proof of concept. What is the first step for that, right? To give you a couple of examples, because that makes it more tangible, right? From the lab, but also a bit of a broader picture, what we actually drive here, right? Process efficiency is something obviously very natural, right? What's the role of AI for supply chain? We have a purchasing value of 40 billion a year. 
You know, improving here at bits and pieces, you can imagine what kind of impact that has, right? Um, we facilitate a, a, a fleet of companion system, what we call decision support, data-driven decision support systems in improving those kinds of stuff. The second aspect, obviously, enhances security, right? We we analyze, you know, more than 60,000 events per second with the, the deep learning, um, you know, um, uh, thing that we produced here. So it's deployed, cloud-based, and observation, each individual links are being analyzed. Is it malicious or not? Is it hacked or not? Right, these kinds of things. Reducing material waste, right? Also something interesting, right? What's the role of, of, of machine learning for additive manufacturing? Additive manufacturing is super important for us because we're printing so many parts as well, right? Or at least uh, have high aspirations to, you know, be more flexible in the production. It gives us some degree of, you know, how do we, how do we construct new stuff if we're not bound by the conditions of the production machinery, right? Getting more throughput, right? Traditional aspect, being in a, in a factory, right? You have PCB boards and you need to analyze them, whether they are, you know, um, from the quality level more enough, or do we need to actuate them, you know, using computer vision modalities on that, um, you know, bringing um, whether they need to be re not refurbished, but rechecked again, um, or are their quality level high enough? Predicting failures in the world, predictive maintenance, right? It's these kinds of stuff. Mobility, you know, detecting traffic and optimizing traffic, but also obviously capturing new domains and large graphs and, and making a logic out of graphical structures, but also horizontal aspects. So things that may be important to more than one vertical in a business. Mm -hmm. What's the role of responsibility in AI? What's the role of ethics in AI? What's the role of trustworthiness? What's the role of sustainability? Right? And so here uh, we do initiatives and launch initiatives together um, and in, in shaping here the notion of thought leadership. On the other side, also something like the Siemens AI residency program, like enabling, you know, other external talents to us um, and working with us on, you know, super important challenges like trustworthiness on, on mm -hmm. robustness of, of those systems. And the last is inception, obviously, and this is what we currently do is how do we interact with ecosystems? Yeah, fast is a new large, right? You said like, hey, we are a large company. Yeah, but actually fast is a new large, right? The ecosystem beats every strategy. And that's why, you know, making the narratives, talking to communities, but also attracting the next, the very next talents. That's super important. And this is, you need to open up, right? You need to talk and engage with all of you. I like the fact that you highlighted that it's just like AI is just a part of everything, right? And it's just like, I, th I, I think five, 10 years ago, people imagined that this is like a clearly defined set of technologies. No, it's just a building block, but it's everywhere. And it's it's beautiful. And um, one of the things you've done is obviously, you've talked a little about, about it a little bit, is is, is pull, pull together teams of data scientists. So I wanted to, to ask, you know, like, how's the situation with the skills on the ground? So do you find it easy to find the people you need? Do you find it hard to find the people you need? And, and is the situation improving or getting worse? Given the current accessibility of machine learning methodology, I love it. TensorFlow, PyTorch, you know, Chucks, you, you name it. It's super easy, super handsome. You know, launching a Python notebook is in two hours, you know, and you get get rolling already, right? You have cloud storage, stuff like that. Shipping in a product is a different stream. And these are the competences, I think, you know, which we somehow, uh, you know, differ to that because shipping it means we need to tilt it on DevOps. AI ops, how to ship it, how to automate it, right? What's the role of architectures and stuff like that. On the other side, on business integration, which which it should land in, right? Because only if if it lands in this dashboard, in this application, in this, it changes something. It does generate value, right? And from my perspective, um, you know, the years of proof of concepts are over. Uh, you know, like there's a lot of talk about low code ap approaches to AI, no AI, no no code approaches to AI. Yeah, what do you think about the sort of like you know like these these mm -hmm. these sort of like the expectation that these tools are are, are are about to hit the market and you know like like suddenly everybody is going to be able to program AI? Ain't got a scale if not everybody can access it. In Siemens we have. Um, Mendix, what it's called, a low code platform. It's, and I, I love the accessibility on that. And I love the platform and its community growing because you see that these platforms grow community because there is such a desire in applying intelligence processes and applications. And if we are not abstract that to the large, you know, we ain't going to make a difference. And that's why I think it's a valid step. And we see specialized research and we see specialized components still needed. Uh, last week, uh, Siemens published a white paper in which they highlighted one of the applications of AI to manage data center, sort of like uh, cooling. 
So mm. the idea is it's it's a very difficult subject, you know, like there's loads of sensors in data centers right now. And again, it's just like, yeah, equ cooling equipment is essentially the main cost. It consumes electricity. Electricity means carbon yeah. emissions. And people are saying, you know, like there's a way to sort of like, you know, like kill a whole bunch of birds with one stone by deploying AI and putting it in charge of data center management. So do you think this is a real application or is this a bit of wishful thinking for, you know, like overworked OT guys? <laughs> that's it. So there is a, a super truth in there, right? But, but you need to see it on, on a one scale bigger. ICT, as an internet communication, hey, we are living in digitalization and digital, you know, competences and software and computation will increase significantly, right? All the digital transformation companies push towards is getting more on cloud, more on edge, more on computation. And that's why obviously it's a super important field in terms of, um, you know, um, of, of the actually production, where, where is the data center, right? And what kind of energy level do we have, right? Um, and data center is obviously a part of our, um, you know, of part of our portfolio, let's say, right? It's supporting that. And this is, I think, where you took it in as, hey, uh, we just released a bit longer actually already, um, you know, make an impact in machine learning, using machine learning uh, methodologies for, for cooling, that the power uses effectiveness, right? So you have data centers, in these data centers, you have cold islands and you have a bit of cold islands, and then you want to put sensors in this, um, you know, to see where where is the temperature discharge and recharge and return, right? And so optimizing the cooling behaviors in these kinds of stuff. Corporates, Partners as well as society, both are you know equal important uh, stakeholder and shareholder there, um, and and needs to be treated. And I think with that, it's it's obviously clear we can have an impact on sustainability as well. Yes, 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 and and, and it's just like and generally like okay, well I'm not going to quote any specific numbers, but generally people predict that AI will actually contribute positively to the to to to, to the climate debate, and and is actually like yeah, one of the one of the absolute best applications of this technology is reducing power consumption of literally everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and to be fair, if you look on on um, you know mach doing machine learning in industry. Um, we don't have this rich data. We do have data, right? But in, in a lot of cases, if you talk to SME, small, medium enterprises, or, you know, to the very own, um, it's not that we have this amount of cats or the amnists, <laughs> stuff like that going on, but it's like, we need to, we need to cope and with the mindset with data efficient learning transfer learning, simulation learning, and these kinds of aspects. And so the natural reflex is already, right? Okay, obviously, yes, we train also big models, no doubt about it. But we, uh, in a lot of cases, especially industrial AI, we, we need to focus on, you know, data efficient learning, which needs different methodologies. Well, thank you for this in insight, Oli. I'm afraid this is everything we have time for today, but it was an absolute pleasure. And uh, hopefully see you in person at one of the AI Summit events, you know, like once, once we're out of the pandemic. Oh, my pleasure. The pleasure is on my side. Thanks very much for your time and listening.